One of the things which intimidates new motorhome and camper van owners the most is your very, very first trip to a campsite. And I get it, it's totally terrifying knowing that you're gonna be maneuvering this hulk into a small space with a load of people watching you and you're more than likely gonna make a mistake. So I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that everyone was a beginner once, everyone has felt the same fear that you might be feeling right now, and everyone has been brave enough to overcome it and get better at it. The bad news is that you probably will make a mistake, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, you'll do something wrong or silly or whatever, you're a beginner, it's okay to make a mistake. If it helps, and it might or it might not, we've been doing this for years now, and yesterday we had possibly our worst entrance to a campsite ever. Honestly, we made so many mistakes, it was ridiculous. So I thought I would share what we did wrong and then tell you how to actually do it right. Hey, I'm Kat and welcome to Wandering Bird. On this channel, we share tips and tricks to help motorhome and campervan owners make the most of their time on the road. And that includes when you arrive at a campsite. Now, we have been doing this for several years now. And don't get me wrong, when we first started, we didn't know what we were doing and we made lots of mistakes. But I think yesterday, when we turned up at a campsite, luckily a campsite that knows us fairly well, we've been here several times, the staff are lovely, so friendly, but we turned up and just, we just got it all wrong. So to start off with, when we arrived at the reception, I couldn't find my membership card. Um, I know it's in the van somewhere and I still need to rip it apart to find it, but it's not in the pocket where it should be, which means that I probably shoved it in a pocket of a jeans last time we used it and who knows where it is now. I need to somehow figure this out. But yeah, that was the first issue that we did wrong. We couldn't find our membership card. Now again, luckily this campsite knows us, they know that we're members, we've been here several times before and they looked us up on the system, not a problem at all. Some campsites are more than happy to do that and are very friendly and, and welcoming and helpful. Others are less so and if you don't have your card or your membership number, if you're staying at a club site obviously, not so much an independent one, but if you don't have your card they can get quite funny. So, First tip is make sure you know if you're staying at a club site where your club cards are or at least have a record of your membership number. Now the Caravan and Motorhome Club makes this really simple when you log in online you can actually see your membership number. For some reason that I cannot fathom the Camping and Caravanning Club when you log on to your online account it doesn't have your membership number or if it does somebody please leave a comment below and tell me where it is because I cannot find the thing. It really should be there somewhere and it's just not. So. Again, first tip, make sure you know where your club card numbers are. If you're brand new, what will happen is you will pull up to a site and if it's a club site or a fairly big site with a reception area, you'll find a waiting area or a pull-in area or something like that and somewhere near the reception where you'll need to pull in and then go in and see them. And they will want your name, your details, your registration of your vehicle. If you don't know that, take a quick photo before you go in. And then they'll also want your card details so that they can check you in as a member. Now, most most club sites accept non-members but you will pay slightly more which is why they need to know what your membership number is so that they can give you the the club member rate not the non-member rate <sighs> So anyway, that's the first thing that you'll happen when you arrive at a site is you have to go and check in. Now, some smaller sites or some CS or CL sites, if you're not sure where they are, I'll leave a link up to the video that I did on those recently. But some smaller sites, when you phone up and book, they might actually give you the pitch number. Like the other week we were on pitch number four. We never actually saw anybody on that site at all. We turned up about six, seven o'clock in the evening. We parked up at pitch number four. We left in the morning and we put the money in the designated spot. That, that was it. So depending on the kind of site you're at, you may or may not have a reception to check in and register or not. What happens next on most big sites is you have to go and find an empty spot. Again, if it's already been pre-allocated, that's fairly straightforward. But on this site, they were like, right, go and find a pitch and then come back and let them know which one you've got. Not a problem at all. We've done this many times before. We've done on this site many times before. So we drove around until we find a spot. Now on this particular site, we know that there are some spots that are good, some spots that are less so. And our biggest reasoning for that is phone signals. Generally, when we use the site, we're using it when we do a couple of work days and phone signals, especially internet signals, really important for us. And we know that there are a couple of dodgy spots on this site where we just cannot get the internet, certainly at the quality that we need. And also the Olympics are at the moment and I wanna stream and watch the Olympics, but mainly, mainly so I can upload helpful videos like this for you. 
we 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 got this wrong so there was only one hard standing pitch left on the site which is fine it has been raining a little bit lately and we've obviously got a motorhome and a heavy trailer so we're a little bit wary about grass pitches so we wanted to go on a hard standing pitch and there was only one and despite our better judgment because it was quite tight we decided that we could get our motorhome and our new longer trailer in there so the trailer is now four meters instead of three um into this turning spot when you're picking a pitch don't just look at the width of the pitch um, it doesn't matter whether you've got a car and a caravan or a motorhome and a trailer or just a motorhome on its own in which case your life will be a lot lot easier but the width is generally going to allow two things side by side whether it is a car caravan or motorhome and a trailer at least on this particular site you can actually get three because they have room for the awning as well but apart from the width look as well as the depth and also the swinging room, especially if you've got car caravan or motorhome and trailer. Because the swinging room to get the angle to get the trailer or the caravan where you need it to go is not always easy. And on this particular pitch, there was a light post on the opposite side of the lane so that we couldn't swing the motorhome out wide enough to get the trailer where we needed it to be to then put the motorhome next to it. We could get the trailer slap bang in the middle of the pitch, but then there wasn't room either side to put the motorhome in so we tried it once and then we tried it twice and at this point of course everybody around us is out and looking at their vans and peering out the windows you're like oh for god why why did i put the name of my blog and youtube channel down the side of my van what was i thinking um yeah i think it, i don't know if it's more embarrassing or not when people know who you are and expect you to be able to do this flawlessly every time and my husband is an absolute genius with the trailer he can get it in and out of some ridiculous spots but we just couldn't physically get the angle on this thing. So we tried to park in the middle of this pitch. And then we tried to move it over a bit and the sort of trailer digs in to the hill. I fixed it, campsite. If you're watching this, don't worry, wardens. I, I, I fixed the mess that we made. Um, but yeah, we, we made a mess. And at which point if I was going, you kind of hear this collective gasp as we sort of take out the edge of this pitch. With the, it, it, we, we made a mess. We, we didn't do it very well at all. So, next tip, make sure that you look at your pitch options really carefully. It doesn't matter how many times you drive around the site, as long as you obey the speed limit, you can go around 10 times if you like, nobody cares. They might mock you a little bit, but they're gonna do that anyway, because at some point you're gonna mess something up. So look, as well as for an empty space, and also make sure it is an empty space. That was the other thing. So we found several that we thought we could get into, only to find out that they had a pitch marker on, or somebody had left an electric cable, or somebody had left a couple of pairs of chairs. All of those things mean the pitch is occupied and they've taken their van off for the day and they've gone off and done whatever they're doing. So those pitches aren't available for you. So you need to look quite carefully before you start backing into a space that's already been reserved, because they won't be happy when they come back and find you on it. So that's the first thing is A, look for an available pitch and then make sure that you can actually wiggle your way into the pitch. So then, of course, we realised that we just, whatever happened, we were not going to get into that pitch in, in, in one piece, at least. So then we had to go and find another pitch. Then we picked one up and realised that we'd parked in a tent pitch. Then we found another one that had actually been shut down by the site because it was too boggy and we almost got stuck, but we didn't. And then finally, we found a pitch that we could get into. It was all good. But there was absolutely no phone signal, none, zippo, zilch. So yeah, this morning we've had to move. <laughs> so luckily another pitch became available, so we've had to get up, pack up, move. It was a palaver, honestly. We made such a mess of choosing that pitch. So make sure that you pick carefully. If you can, try and find an easy one for your first trip because it's, yeah, manoeuvring these things are quite hard work. And if you have got a trailer or a car or a caravan on the back, it makes it even more exciting. So plan carefully. And if you have got that and you are nervous, my advice would be to come as close to opening time as you can so that there are as many available pitches as there's gonna be on that day. And hopefully it gives you a little bit more selection than if you come later in the day and then there's only one or two options. And they're gonna be the ones that are tough to get into because nobody else wants to go into them. So, so far we've messed up the reception. We've messed up the choosing the pitch. We're now parked up somewhere with no phone signal. It's not going well. <laughs> And then having manoeuvred ourselves 
into this pitch, we realised that we'd forgotten to empty the waste, which we needed to do on the way. But by then we'd made such a mess of everything else that we just were too embarrassed to get off again. We didn't want to move because <laughs> we'd taken our trailer off. We could have, to be fair, we'd taken the trailer off. We could have gone around with the motorhome. But we were just like, no, we're, we're just going to sit here quietly, having made such a, an arrival. <laughs> and then we were like, no, it's fine. We've got our little jug. We'll empty the waste into the jug. We'll do a couple of trips and take at least half of the waste off before we go around tomorrow and do em all the full emptying and everything that we need to do at the service point. So we get a little jug and I attach it to the waste outlet and I press the freshwater dump valve instead of the wastewater dump valve on our motorhome. The two are right next to each other and it is quite easy to get them wrong but after all this time I thought I was past that. Turns out I'm not. When you're having a bad day you're just having a bad day. So I flick the switch, I go back out to check that the wastewater is filling and the freshwater is dumping itself next to it luckily it's fresh water and it goes into the ground and it was fine but for about 10 seconds we were just dumping water out of our van which is never a good look and not something you ever want to do on a campsite because again everyone's sitting there and they're judging you and oh just yes yeah. so yeah i ran back in obviously turned the water off turned the wastewater on and it was all fine after that but that was just something else that i did wrong so once you've found a pitch, if you need to service your motorhome or empty something, or like a lot of people do if you're just turning up to a campsite, they need to go and fresh get fresh water, put some sort of pitch marker on your pitch um, without parking it up so that you know that that's your pitch, you know where you're going, and then you can go around to the service point, get fresh water, empty any waste that you need to, and then head back to your pitch and park up properly. Once you've done that and you're all happy, make sure you plug in the electric. Always make sure that you flake out your cable. Don't leave it cord up because it can cause fires. Some places have electric that you just plug straight in. It's fine. Some of them you need to plug them in and turn it. You need to turn it quite hard, generally clockwise, and that will turn the electric on. In the campsite that we're on at the moment, they actually have both types. So depending on which pitch you are, depending on which way you have to do it. Some campsites as well, you've got a switch on the meter that you need to turn on. And some of them you also have a pay, pay as you go meter if you're, you are going to use the electric. So you need to have some sort of card or pay some money to the reception or however it is it works. But yeah, if you're going to use electric, plug it in when you get there and then you can start taking out your awning or your extra room or if you've got any little furniture then now's the time to get it all out because you're there and you can settle and you can chill and once all that's done and you're parked up properly now might be the time to open a bottle of something delicious and congratulate yourself on turning up at a campsite facing your fears and enjoy your first night on the site in your van however <laughs> Because we were having one of those days and we thought one of those days would coming, what we decided to do was our laundry. So we went to the laundry room. I said, this is a royal we. I went to the laundry room on the site and I put my money into one machine, worked fine. So I was doing a colours and a whites and I put my money into the other machine and it ate my money and nothing. So then I had to trudge back to the reception. Luckily, they didn't know everything that had gone wrong so far, but I had to trudge to the reception and explain to them what happened. And a lovely guy came out and helped me. And so then it all worked and I left it and I took Mac for a walk and we went and they've got an amazing dog field here. So we went for a good walk for half an hour while the laundry was going. And I came back having walked him and found that the other washing machine, I have a curse, washing machines generally hate me, especially on campsites. We had issues in the Netherlands when we were at Githorn and the washing machine just died. And then we had issues with the washing machine in Norway. Oh, they just hate me. So yeah, I came back and the other one had broken. Luckily it had washed it, but you couldn't open the door and there was a big error message flattering and it was just yeah so then I'd walk back to the reception at this point I was like I'm I'm, I'm so sorry I won't ever come here again <laughs> it was just one of those days luckily it was all fixed we managed to get my laundry out it was all okay I hope sharing our mistakes and failures make you a little bit less intimidated if you are worrying about your first trip to the campsite if you are new to motorhoming you might find either of these two videos helpful with planning your next trip and if you're new to the channel and you'd like more motorhome tips and tricks then by all means hit subscribe thanks for watching I'll see you on the next video